Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to our latest preview for Natsu 2023, this one for Hokuto Fuji and Onisho. Their 8-8 eight eight lifetime against each other, a matchup originally dominated by Onisho before Hokuto Fuji came roaring back to take 5 in a row. They've split their last 4 and their matches beg the question, what happens when an unstoppable force meets another unstoppable force? Our first match to watch is from January 2022. <laughs> On the Tachi Eye, Onisho dives in with one hand up, while Hokuto Fuji charges forward with arms out like your aggressively friendly cousin at the family reunion. Hokuto Fuji brings his head to the left after initial contact, then turns his body right, showing a clear intent to turn or push Onisho in that direction by digging into Onisho's body with his left hand. From another angle, we see Onisho is simply defending against the momentum with both forearms up. Hokuto Fuji frees his right hand while maintaining his left under Onisho's right armpit, however, this also frees Onisho's left hand so the position remains balanced. Hokuto Fuji swings his right arm around and down, but Onisho's hand is already well positioned so he pushes before Hokuto Fuji can strike. While Hokuto Fuji attacks the left arm, Onisho gets it out of the way and pushes his opponent's head back with his right hand which is not affected by the hand in his armpit. When he releases and lets Hokuto Fuji recoil forward, Hokuto's arms are still extended, making them easy slapdown targets. Onisho nimbly steps aside and uses both hands to make sure Hokuto Fuji touches down. Although Hokuto Fuji lost, it's indicative of the main weakness in each of their styles. Their next match was four months later in May. <laughs> So, how does Hokuto Fuji return the favor? Onisho again comes in with one hand high, but this time Hokuto Fuji has brought both hands in rather than swinging them out. Onisho drills Hokuto Fuji with his face, plants his right hand on Hokuto Fuji's chest, and looks to grip Hokuto's right arm. But look at Onisho's feet, how wide they are. He has zero real balance and not much even accounting for how hard he's leaning on his opponent. Hokuto Fuji no doubt recognizes this and pulls down on Onisho. Look closely at his right hand. He's really not pulling on anything other than Onisho's body fat here. From the other side though, you can see he has his left hand on top of Onisho's right arm, which is still planted hard on his chest. This isn't a ton of pull down leverage. In many cases, a wrestler in Onisho's position might stagger but stay on his feet, at least for the moment. But Onisho has completely sold out on this attack, and when it doesn't drive Hokuto Fuji back on his heels immediately, he's open to this counter. Hokuto Fuji's tachi eye change likely won him this match. If his arms had been wide again, Onisho likely would have barreled through him far more effectively than he was able to here. The third match we'll see is from September, and this one was a battle. Once again, Onisho uses the same opening strategy. Hokuto Fuji changes it up a little bit more, at least in a sense. He gets a better jump off the start and turns his right shoulder into Onisho. He sort of did this last time, but he wound up not leading with the shoulder as much as absorbing Onisho's impact onto it, because he didn't get as good of a jump. By getting that better lead, even though Onisho absorbs the contact well, Hokuto Fuji is able to drive his forearm up into Onisho's chin. Although Onisho gets his right hand on Hokuto Fuji's chest and his left hand gripping the triceps, Hokuto Fuji's right hand is unimpeded and he starts shoving Onisho away by the face. Once he gets to here, Hokuto Fuji clearly has the upper hand. His hands are inside his own shoulders, well positioned on the neck and armpit, and Onisho is on one foot. With few options, Onisho defends by literally jumping and torquing his body until his right arm is vertical. Although he's still not able to get Hokuto Fuji's forearm off his neck, he frees himself from the pushing left by whipping his arm around. Once Onisho's feet are set and his hands are in a position to muster some offense, Hokuto Fuji has no choice but to take his arm off the neck and battle from this new position. On this side, we see Onisho's right arm securing Hokuto Fuji's elbow while Hokuto Fuji plants his hand on Onisho's belly. From the other side, 
Hokuto Fuji clamps Onisho's arm while reaching over for the belt. Now they're in a pretty balanced position. Onisho attacks, twisting to his right. This puts immense pressure on Hokuto Fuji's left arm because of the clamp, while the rising left shoulder gets Hokuto's right hand well away from the belt. Onisho powers his way up, stepping forward with a leverage advantage, but before he can plan his foot, Hokuto Fuji slides his right foot back, dropping his weight back down on Onisho and re-securing the right side clamp. He tilts his body left while Onisho drives forward. Onisho is trying to keep the pushing momentum going while Hokuto Fuji is trying to off-balance him so he can counterattack. When Onisho keeps pressing, Hokuto Fuji twists hard to the right, succeeding in getting Onisho into a more unsteady state. This only lasts a moment. Onisho gets his foot down, but when he steps back, this opens an opportunity for Hokuto Fuji to press forward and grip the back of Onisho's belt with his right hand. It bears mentioning that Onisho was able to get hold of Hokuto Fuji's belt with his left hand as Hokuto Fuji began this push, so they both have a belt grip on that side. Onisho is able to stop the push though, and responds by driving forward off his left foot. When Hokuto Fuji begins to reposition his left foot for better stability, Onisho releases the clamp with his right arm and punches his hand down inside of Hokuto Fuji's grip under his armpit. However, when he drives upward, we see Hokuto Fuji's left hand around his right, which means he wasn't able to get to Hokuto's belt. With his arm in this unbelievably awkward position, he's forced to fight for control of it, which opens another opportunity for Hokuto Fuji to drive him back, this time to the rope. Onisho defends by turning so hard to his left that he picks Hokuto Fuji's left foot off the ground. This is a pure power move from a terrible position. It works though. He pushes off the rope just before Hokuto Fuji recovers, and now he once again has the momentum advantage. Hokuto Fuji recognizes this though, and rather than try to blunt another charge, simply steps back further with his left and uses his belt grip to attempt a throw. Onisho plants his right foot to defend, and when he circles back into Hokuto Fuji, Hokuto drops his weight way, way down. This may look like a position susceptible to a pushdown, but with his right arm over Onisho's left and locked into the belt, there's no way Onisho can try it. Instead, Onisho tries another drive forward, but when that much weight has that low a center of gravity, it doesn't move easily. He does secure a belt grip with his left hand, though. He tries once to bounce Hokuto Fuji back, but that does effectively nothing. Hokuto Fuji steps his right foot forward and bears his weight to the left, attempting to throw Onisho over his knee, but Onisho sees it coming and gets his feet repositioned before the attempt really even starts. Onisho tries yet another forward drive, but Hokuto Fuji has already moved his right foot back and taken an unbreakable defensive position. Now Onisho adjusts by stepping aside and using his belt grip to pull Hokuto Fuji forward where all that weight is leaning, but Hokuto Fuji defends almost purely by the strength of his own belt grip. Instead of going flying, he spins around and pulls Onisho along with him. Despite this, all of Onisho's weight is coming at him and his feet are square, which is a very bad position to try and defend from. But even though Onisho's trying a final push forward, his momentum is still moving somewhat in a circle, and he ends up spinning towards the rope rather than continuing his forward push. Now his feet are on the rope, and once more it's Hokuto Fuji's turn to press. It's a defensible position, but after all that, Onisho is just out of gas, and down he goes. This one is just... I mean, holy shit. The overarching goal of these previews is to show how guys adjust to each other over time, but sometimes you get a fight where it's simply two wrestlers with similar abilities and a similar lifetime of experience digging all the way through their bag of tricks. The last fight we'll watch from this past January is admittedly anticlimactic. This time they both do something a little different on the Tachi Eye. Hokuto Fuji comes in with hands up, but not out wide. He's attacking Onisho's arms. Meanwhile, Onisho's right hand is up again, but it's not extended like usual. Onisho gets a small initial push. From the opposite side, we see his right arm is actually diving inside and low this time, seeking a belt grip. He can't get the grab though, so he brings both arms up and starts pushing. It's simple enough. However, since Hokuto Fuji went after Onisho's arms but still failed to effectively shut down either one, his only defense in the moment is to push back on Onisho's chest despite the momentum sliding him back. 
Onisho drives forward, hands on Hokuto Fuji's shoulders to minimize Hokuto Fuji's defensive power, and that's how they draw it up in the playbook. It should be easy to see why these two are so evenly matched. They're very comfortable with their styles, and because they have similar styles, they also know how to defend those styles pretty well. One of them might pull ahead in the lifetime matchup. If I had to guess which one, I would say Onisho because his best performances are, in my opinion, at a higher level than Hokuto Fuji's, but it really could be either of them. That's it for day seven. Like it if you learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow.